Next, I would like to invite Jake Oaken up on stage with me. Jake is our IB valedictorian. He has consistently impressed the faculty at Iowa High School with his aptitude for scientific and technological work. Jake placed first at the St. Brain Valley Tech Fair, was awarded the Leadership and Pathfinder Award from First Robotics Competition Team, Upper Creek Robotics, and received the Outstanding Young Adult Mentor Award at the first LEGO League Regional Tournament. Jake created and operated the Operation Code Clash computer programming competition, and he was awarded a patent for a dynamically changing game board. Jake's remarkable academic success speak for themselves, and while they should be celebrated, they make up only one part of his impressive portfolio of accomplishments. In his free time, Jake is a talented drummer and musician, might I add dancer. He has a passion for theater and acting. Jake also enjoys writing fiction and has even published a novel available on Amazon. Jake will be attending Carnegie Mellon University this fall to study computer science and robotics. Please give a big round of applause to this year's IB valedictorian, Jake Olkin. So, a lot of people have offered me advice about this speech, and it's surprising how many people gave me the same piece of advice. And I'm sorry, but I'm about to disappoint all of you, I'm not dancing for my valedictorian speech. I know, I know, but I actually have something I want to say about high school, because I've done a lot of things other than dancing. I've also stressed, built robots, attended classes, stressed some more, and I played a lot of Jenga. And when I say a lot of Jenga, I mean a lot. It's surprising how entertaining this party game can be when you're playing in your room, at night, alone. But that's beside the point. For those of you who don't know what Jenga is, it's a game where you build a tower from 54 wooden blocks, and you remove blocks from part of the tower and place them on top. The person who knocks over the tower loses. After you get through one or 15 rounds of Jenga, you begin to see how this game parallels a lot of things. It's analogous to building large towers without proper structural support, for one. But, more importantly, at least for today, it kind of represents what it's like to go through high school. Okay, a bit of a stretch, I know, but just bear with me on this. So, first you have to set up your game, which involves getting a bunch of wooden blocks together. These are usually the resources you need to go through high school, that you gather in middle school, like study skills, previous knowledge, or friends, also known as assets. But by the time you start high school, you've built up your tower and you're ready to start the greatest balancing act of your life. Now, every Jenga tower looks stable at first, but freshmen aren't the most trusting people around. Let's be honest, freshman year was awkward. We wanted to make sure our footing was right so no one would judge us. We were reluctant to play the game. And I know that when I came here in freshman year, I knew maybe one, two people. It took me a while to start reaching out, but I left my shell eventually. I branched out in second semester, and if I was to pinpoint a specific moment, it would be at the Sadie Hawkins dance. Apparently, the Sadie Hawkins dance is a dance that the girls are supposed to ask guys to go to. I didn't know this until someone told me after I had already arrived at the dance by myself. I didn't even have a group of friends there, it was just me. I stayed anyways and danced the night away, and begun to pull blocks out from my tower. I started the game of high school Jenga, and by the end of freshman year, I had pulled out a few blocks. And then we moved into sophomore year, thinking, well, that wasn't that bad. We charged ahead, pulling out blocks almost at random. The tower quickly weakened, and we found ourselves facing a wobbling mess only a few weeks, maybe a month into our second year of high school. It's not easy balancing class, extracurricular activities, friends, and sleep. But they're all part of your tower. It'll topple if you get rid of one entirely. Although, I know a lot of people in front of me claim they could do without sleep. But if there's one thing I've learned about my peers, is that they don't really care if it's difficult to balance all the things they want to do. So we reach further and build our towers higher. However, for all the great things I have to say about my classmates, if there's one thing they can't do, it's play a perfect game of Jenga. Highest, I know that some have gotten close. Highest tower I've ever heard of was 41 levels. But they all fell eventually. Something slips between the cracks and we forget an assignment, or all the schedules line up and we have a week full of tests, affectionately known as the apocalypse. Not everyone can continue to play their Jenga game when an earthquake like that happens. That's when the tower falls, the cookie crumbles, and someone, somewhere, feels it all come crashing down. 
But that's why, par why Jenga's a party game, isn't it? At least the metaphor version is. You will have all the other people playing Jenga with you to help you pick up the pieces and rebuild your tower better, stronger, sturdier than the last one. You have your friends, your family, your teachers. At least, those are the people who've helped me recover, and I couldn't have gotten here without them. They're all willing to pick up a piece or two and help you rebuild that base tower. And now, you've gotten experience picking out those wood blocks. It's difficult to keep your Jenga tower growing if you don't know how it falls. And that's what we do here at Nywat. We push ourselves until we reach our limit, pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and reach higher, until you find yourself on this stage. And even though we're here, it doesn't mean our Jenga tower has gotten any sturdier. It's still swaying at even the slightest breath. We've just gotten used to it. Life never gets any easier. We just get better at handling it. But even though we're here, that doesn't mean we're going to just stop playing the game. I know that I'm bringing, bringing a Jenga set with me to college, both literally and figuratively. Heck, we should be building our tower, towers up for the rest of our lives. Building ourselves up, building each other up, one wooden block at a time. College isn't that much different, it's just a new kind of balancing act. But you still have the same pieces and the same goal. Go as high as you can. I'm not here to tell you how high your Jenga tower will go. I can't predict the future. I'm not here to tell you how to build that tower either. Your success is entirely up to you. I can't tell you how you might knock down your tower because everyone has a different style of falling. Some of us may hit the tower while we aren't paying attention. Others might only lose their tower to an earthquake because there's no other way they would crash it themselves. I can't even tell you where you'll play your game, be it in your room late at night, under a canvas of stars, or on a table surrounded by friends. Jenga can be played anywhere. It might take you to great places, or it might take you nowhere special. Either way, you owe it to yourself to keep playing that game. So, in short, shoot for the stars. And when you fall, fall with a crash. The louder the crash, the higher you climb before, and the higher you'll get next time. It's all up to how willing you are to try hard to chase the opportunities presented to you. After following one opportunity to another, you'll find yourself chasing the sun. If life comes down to one thing, it's a willingness to try harder, because that's the best way to get better at something. You don't just start out as a Jenga master. You have to have played and lost more than a few times to understand the ways of the tower. I guess I'll stop my Jenga-based rant here and let you go off to your parties and families and futures you have waiting for you. Maybe you've heard me well and feel inspired. Maybe you're quietly laughing at me. Actually, I think most of the laughter so far has been less with me and more at me. Um, actually, but it doesn't really matter. All I want is for people to remember this as a story to tell later. Because trying harder, taking risks, and everything that Jenga stands for, and even falls for, is important. And who knows? One wood block might make the difference. I know that 54 made a difference for me. Thank you. Nice job, Jake. Thank you.